jury selection taking place today in the trial of three men accused of killing Ahmad Arbery. Hundreds of people were ordered to report for jury duty today. Officials say jury selection could take at least two weeks. Travis and Greg McMichael, along with William Bryan, are accused of chasing and killing Arbery in February of 2020. They say they were trying to make a, quote, citizen's arrest of Arbery, accusing him of theft in the Brunswick, Georgia neighborhood. Civil rights attorney Ben Crump is focusing on getting justice for Arbery. As everybody knows, it's jury selection, and we believe, just like in George Floyd's case, we can get a fair and impartial jury to deliver justice in this matter. Trial is scheduled to begin each day at 9 a.m. BNC will have continuing coverage of the trial. Outrage in Philly as a woman is allegedly sexually assaulted on a SEPTA train, and no one aboard even tried to help her. It happened last Wednesday around 10 p.m. 35-year-old Fistan Ngoy got on the train and sat next to the woman. After the woman refused his advances, he then ripped her clothes off. Authorities say the assault lasted about eight minutes. A transportation authority employee and an officer finally came to the woman's aid. Several other passengers were on the train but did not step in. Authorities say some of the people may have even recorded the assault on their phones. According to police, if anyone on the train recorded and didn't intervene, they could face criminal charges. This is one of the most infuriating and disturbing stories that I have heard in a long time. A woman was sexually assaulted on a Philadelphia train. First of all, the fact that we live in a world where someone could be sexually assaulted in full public view is a testament to rape culture. It's a testament to how normalized it has become and how normalized it has always been that black women and women in general are vulnerable in public space or in private space. We got to be honest about that. But there's something else that makes this disgusting to me. People were on the train watching. Now, I understand that one of y'all might be scared. You don't know if he has a knife. You don't know if he has a gun. But there were a decent number of people on this train car. It wasn't one or two people. They say it was fewer than dozens, but it was more than a handful. So if you got five or ten people on a train watching a woman be sexually assaulted and you do nothing, what does that say about you? Everybody's a gangster. Everybody tough. Everybody talk crazy on the Internet. But when you got a real-life opportunity to step in and do something, y'all don't do nothing? And then on top of that, this video social media culture where you pick up the phone and you videotape an assault, you videotape a beating, you videotape a shooting, you videotape a robbery, you videotape stuff instead of stepping in. Sometimes you got to videotape stuff. I understand in the case of uh, George Floyd, for example, we videotaped it because the police were going to kill you. I get it. But this was an opportunity to save somebody's life, potentially. This was an opportunity to stop a sexual assault. And y'all didn't do nothing but pick up your phone. This ain't for the gram. This ain't for Twitter. This is real life. And everybody who did nothing is a coward. Y'all are cowards. This isn't about calling the police. This is about stopping something. If you were, I'm an abolitionist. I don't even believe in prisons and police. But I know one thing. If I don't believe in prisons and police, then I damn sure better do something when I'm sitting on a train and I see somebody assaulted. Y'all didn't call the police, though. Y'all didn't step in physically. Y'all didn't do anything. What does that say about us? And what does that say about how we see women in this society? We got to do better. Turning now to Haiti, where 17 missionaries were kidnapped over the weekend. 16 of them were American. The other was Canadian, according to the Christian organization for which they work. Five of those abducted are children. The missionaries were traveling to a small village after visiting an orphanage near Port-au-Prince. Sources say they were kidnapped by gang members. Their location? Still unknown. According to a human rights advocacy group in Haiti, kidnappings have surged there this year, with numbers rising nearly 300 percent since July. Joining me now is J.R. Gallo. He is the executive vice president of Phoenix Political. Welcome to Black News Tonight once again, sir. Talk to me. Why are there missionaries in Haiti at all when the country at the current state is not safe and the State Department has actually issued warnings against anybody traveling there? I have no idea. 
I honestly can't answer that. That, that was a question. Uh, it's not safe to travel. There's a level four alert. Do not go to Haiti. Uh, but why are they still there and without any protection? So it baffles the mind to wonder why they're there. It, it is absolutely baffling. Have any of the missionaries in Haiti in the recent past been implicated in crimes or other misconduct? Oh, absolutely. Quite a few of them. Uh, that's the problem that's happening in Haiti. You have, they are unchecked. There is no, uh, when you're a missionary, it's pretty easy to go to Haiti. There's no control process. Uh, there's no background checks. Uh, quite a few missionaries have been implicated in crimes, uh, kidnapping, rape of children. It's terrible. And that takes away from some institutions that are actually doing good work in Haiti. Um, and the work is needed. The reason the work is needed is because the Haitian government has continuously failed to do its job to do what is necessary to provide for Haitian citizens. So missionaries come in and then there's a void and they come in and try to fill it. Hmm. Talk to me about United States policy. How has U.S. policy contributed to the conditions uh, that kind of spawned the latest crisis? No, oh, man, I don't think we got enough time tonight. Uh, U.S. <laughs> policy has just been absolutely atrocious. Going back since the, uh, the occupation back in 1915, U.S. started out, took out all the gold and basically raided the finances of Haiti. Uh, also, Haiti had to pay $21 billion in damages to France for having the temerity, the audacity of freeing itself from the bondage of slavery. Um, so that's one of the big issues that has destroyed Haiti. But the U.S. hasn't helped. The U.S. has continuously propped up shadow governments, dictatorships in the past. And we need the change, of course, of action. And uh, the most frustrating part about this is all this was preventable because uh, quite a few of us, including myself, saw it coming. Um, the, back in 2018, I asked uh, members of Congress to fund money for a gun buyback program, and it didn't happen, and this is where we are today. A lot of these missionaries have been convicted of trafficking weapons because they have their own planes. They get in, they're unchecked, so they don't abide by the same rules as custom, but everybody else and um, they can pack it in certain things and say, hey, this is for charity work and it really doesn't get searched. You have to wonder, how are all these weapons getting into Haiti? Uh, you have a porous border between the Dominican Republic uh, and Haiti that is completely not secured. That needs to be secured. Um, so the problem is, is it's going to continuously get worse because the United States seems to be propping up this government right now that is not an elected government. The Haitian people are tired of it. They want a chance to fix their own country. We have to allow them that chance. And that has not been happening. You have a youth movement that started four or five years ago uh, with countless protests that mainstream media here in the United States has continuously ignored in terms of what's been happening in Haiti. Everyone wants to talk about the bad things of Haiti. Haiti is one of the most beautiful countries on the planet. When you go there, the, the crystal blue waters, it's the friendliest people. It's the hardest working people that you're, you're going to find. Ask anybody here if they've ever had a Haitian nurse, they'll tell you it's probably the best quality care they've received. So U.S. policy is detrimental, and the State Department, the Biden administration, need to step up and change policy and let Haiti decide its own course of action and stop uh, putting the pressure and propping up shadow governments. So, I mean, I, my, my final question to you was a, a question of sort of practically what can be done. So part of what you've said is what we should stop doing as the United States government, right? Which is to d not promote shadow governments, not prop up governments, to kind of take a, a step back. Are there any uh, other policy moves or initiatives that we can do that will undo the damage that has been caused uh, over the last century? Absolutely. So first thing, one of the main things the United States could do is, is open up the visa process a little bit for Haitians to come educated with the condition that they go back to Haiti. OK, there's easy ways to figure out where people are going to be. Uh, you're going to have some critics who are going to say, oh, we don't want them in our country and vice versa. But that's the old standard, uh, you know, outcry from the right all the time. Another thing that can be done is teaching them uh, how to write proper uh, laws, anti-corruption. Uh, they are capable, but there's always some loopholes. 
close those loopholes, strong anti-corruption, push for that, push for the inclusion of women in elected offices. Generally, women, when they are elected to office, they do a better job. We want to see more women run for office in Haiti. Uh, a few years ago, my daughter and I went down to Haiti. My daughter volunteered at the YWCA in Port-au-Prince and talked to a countless amount of young women who want to change policy. Um, there's quite a few leaders out there, so that's just the start. That's a good start. If we can do any of what you just said, we'll be much, uh, very much along the way toward progress. Uh, JR, thank you so much uh, for your insightful comments as always. Well, thanks for coming to Black News tonight. Everybody, we want to hear from you as well. Make sure you go to our BNC Instagram and Twitter pages. Let us know how you feel. Also, visit our website, bnc.tv, and subscribe to our YouTube channel to check out clips from the show.